Hello, so <clears throat> this lesson for an Algebra 2 student should feel a bit like review. You did do quite a bit of this in Algebra 1. However, I know it's been a long time since so let's review this. We're going to be solving systems of two linear equations using all three methods that you probably learned in Algebra 1. The first being graphing, and then we're going to do substitution, and then linear combination, which most teachers end up calling elimination. So when we're graphing two linear equations, you want to make sure that you remember how to graph a line. So to refresh your memory when you're graphing a line in slope-intercept form, which is our preferred method, y equals mx plus b. You look for the y-intercept first, which is the plus b part, and this is where you start on the y-axis, and then after that, you make, you make a point there, and then you look at the value for m, which represents slope. And slope indicates how you should rise and run for the rate of change for your line. So when I look at this first line here, 1 half x minus 2. All right, so first of all, a disclaimer. Even on a good day, I am horrible at graphing, like terrible. So considering I am writing on an airliner tablet, uh, give me a little, a little less grief than you normally would for what you're about to witness. Oh, this is why I don't teach geometry. All right, so 1 half x minus 2. We're going to start at negative 2 on the y-axis. And then from that point, the slope indicates that we should rise 1 and then run 2. So remember, slope positive indicates either a positive over a positive movement. Could also be negative over negative movement. Uh, most of us go positive first. So up 1, right 2. Up 1, right 2. Could also go down 1, left 2. Down 1, left 2. The reason I'm making so many points based on the rate of change is because I am a terrible grapher. <laughs> so if I just basically draw like a skeleton of a line, and then I can see where they intersect. Because that's the whole point of this problem. So my next line is negative 2x plus 3. So starting at 3 on the y-intercept. This time the slope is negative 2. But remember slope rate of change is a fraction. So negative 2 over 1 is how we're going to read that. So most of you would move down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. And then traditionally I would have you guys actually connect the points and make a line or two lines. Um, I'm not even going to attempt it because I don't want to embarrass myself here on the internet. But I do notice that they intersect right here at this point. And the ordered pair notation for you guys, remember, is x comma y. So don't confuse ordered pairs with slope, which is what a lot of kids end up doing. So this ordered pair is at the location 2, negative 1. So that is the solution. Easy peasy. Easy peasy simply because those lines were in slope-intercept form. So this one, we're going to graph 2x plus 2 starting at up 2, and then same thing, the slope is 2 over 1 this time, so up 2, right 1, or I could go down 2 and left 1. I'm going to stop graphing there. Let's pretend I connected the points. I didn't. I actually don't think I have to finish this problem at all, because look what's about to happen. This one has a slope, starts at 4, also has a slope of up 2, right 1, or down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. And if I did a good job of graphing, and I actually connected the points, you would see that these two lines are parallel. So think about if I asked you, all right, so the solution here ooh, <laughs> is where your lines intersect. Well, parallel lines do not intersect, so there is no solution. So usually Algebra 2 kids say, if I know they're parallel, do I have to even go through this and actually show you that they're parallel? Like I can tell they're parallel because their slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. And my answer to that is no, you don't have to graph them. Um, there might be a time in your life where you have to justify to me why you know there's no solution and you would say the words because they're parallel, and that would be enough. <clears throat> well, let's look at a couple of, of different forms of lines. Number three, it is in standard form. So for most of you, you're not happy graphing lines in standard form. You can graph them in standard form by finding x and y intercepts. For most kids, though, they just want to isolate for y and solve it in slope intercept form. So if I kind of rewrote this equation and I tried to solve for y, I would first subtract the x over. So I'd have negative y equals negative x plus 3. But I'm not done because i got to divide everything by a negative 1 now. <clears throat> so this line becomes y equals positive x and then minus 3. So let's go ahead and graph that. So starting at negative 3, this one has a slope of positive 1, I can tell now. 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1. Let's pretend I connected because, you know, I'm not going to. And then this is a special case of a line. x equals 1. Um, you think about this as being the x-axis, right? So if you go to where x equals exactly 1 and then you draw a line through it, that would be, uh, 
Oh, oh boy. I started off so strong, right? <laughs> Pretend. Pretend that connected. Um, the whole point, remember, was to see where they would have intersected. Ah, there we go. And they would have intersected right there at that ordered pair. So x equals 1 is always going to be a vertical line x equals any number is a vertical line through whatever number they indicate. And the reason for it being vertical is because everywhere along this line, the x value of the ordered pair is always going to be a 1, but the, the y is going to change to many things. Anywho, the solution to this system of equations was at the ordered pair 1, negative 2. Oh, yuck. <laughs> All right, so it's a good number 4. Y is not isolated in either equation. The good news is this one's really easy to isolate. Bad news is this one, it takes two steps, but that's okay, we can do that. So first I would subtract the x, so I end up with 2y equals negative x plus 4. And then I would divide everybody by a 2. So I end up with y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. And then let's go ahead and rewrite this one, just in case they're parallel or something. Um, they're not. <laughs> y equals, I would subtract the 3x minus 3. All right, let's graph. So negative 1 half x plus 2 would start at 2. And then careful, the slope this time is negative 1 half, which means it's a negative rise over a positive run, or vice versa. So negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. Could also go up 1, negative 2, up 1, negative 2. And then we're going to graph negative 3x minus 3, starting at negative 3 on the y-intercept. And then same thing with your slope, it's negative 3 over 1. So you could move down 3, right 1, but we're going to run out of room. So let's go up 3, left 1, up 3, left 1. And then remember, I, in a perfect world, I would write your order, I would draw your lines before I wrote the ordered pair, but it's not a perfect world, people. All right, the ordered pair location is at negative 2, 3. So for me, I hate graphing. I absolutely hate it. Um, for linear equations, at least, because I, I'm i not good at it. And I don't do a good job at it in any circumstance. <laughs> so if given a choice, graphing is not my first one. Um, so good news. We got other, other methods. The next one is called substitution. And the idea of substituting one equation into another works as long as they have the same, at least a portion of the same problem. So they have to have some common variables. And systems always do. So when I look here, it says y equals 5x, my, uh, 5x plus 23. What that means is anytime I see a y, I could replace it with a 5x plus 23. So they are exactly the same thing for this problem. So when I look down at this equation, Instead of it saying y equals, what if I replace this y with the 5x plus 23? And you're thinking, okay, like that doesn't look better, but it is better, because and let's see why. Because when I set up the rest of the equation, now I have a multi-step equation, but it only has one variable in it. It just has the x, which I know how to solve for. I'm going to add the 7x over. At the same time, let's go ahead and subtract the 23. So that gives us 12x, these are gone, those are gone, equal sign, and then negative 36. And then dividing by 12 on both sides, and we get x equals negative 3. And it'd be awesome if we were done, but remember, ordered pairs have two components, the x and the y component. What I love about substitution is that thing that you boxed in at the beginning of the problem, it's like a recipe for the missing variable. It says y is 5 times x plus 23. So I just found out what x is. So let's go ahead and use this recipe and say 5 times negative 3 plus 23. So that would be negative 15 plus 23. And if I huh, simplify that, it should totally be easy, right? 8. <laughs> it's 8. Um, for me, I'm always going to give you systems that work out really quite nice. So if you get a weird answer, like a fraction. A weird fraction probably did it wrong all right so this next example you want to look through the question and see if there's a recipe that's already set up for you in other words a variable that is already isolated and I notice it happens right away right here with y being equal to two, negative 2x plus 1 so anytime I see a y later on in the problem I could replace it with negative 2x plus 1 for instance right there so let's rewrite this equation 6x 
plus 3, but in place of y, we're going to substitute the negative 2x plus 1. All right, now I use my algebra skills to simplify and then eventually solve this equation. So 6x, okay, careful right here. This becomes a negative 6x plus 3. Uh-oh, we got a special circumstance here. The x's are going to knock out. And you end up with this really weird statement of negative 3 equals neg or sorry, 3 equals negative 5. Not today, folks. <laughs> this does not happen. So when your x's cancel out, sometimes you have what are called infinitely many solutions. This is not that. This is a bogus statement. So this is where you see a no solution. Had I graphed these lines, you would have seen that they were parallel um, because they weren't going to intersect. Algebraically, this is what a no solution looks like. All right. So same idea here. It'd be awesome if I could just box in one of the recipes that's already solved for. Turns out neither one is. So we have to do a little bit of work. So I, it, the good news is you have a lot of choice. You can solve for any of these variables. So you want to use one that's really easy to isolate. This would be super easy to isolate. If I just added this y over, I would get x equals y plus 1. So instead of using this form, I'm going to use that form. All right, so what that means for me is that wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a y plus 1. For instance, right there. So this top equation becomes negative 2, but then instead of x, we're going to write y plus 1. And I'm going to use my algebra skills, and I'm going to set up or solve this setup. So negative 2y minus 2 plus 2y equals negative 2. Uh-oh. These cancel each other. And I get negative 2 equals negative 2. And I know you're thinking, oh, the last one is no solution. This was, must be one of those as well. No, this is actually an infinitely many solutions problem because the big difference here is that while the variables canceled out on this one, I got a bogus statement. This next one I did I have a true statement. Negative 2 does equal negative 2. The only issue is that's not a unique solution, so it's not very helpful. So we say that there are infinitely can't spell all of a sudden. Infinitely that doesn't look right. You know what happens in math when you don't know how to spell? You abbreviate. Infinitely many solutions. So if I were to graph these two lines at the same time, it turns out they would be the exact same line. So when I asked you where they intersected, everywhere. They intersected all the time. So there was no one unique solution. Oh, yuck. Um, number eight kind of gross if I go to try to solve for one of the variables. So I'm feeling like the easiest one to solve for would be that y right there. We're going to have to add the 6y over. So I get 3y or 6x uh, equals 6x uh, minus 9. <sighs> and then divide everything by 3. So this ends up being y equals 2x minus 3. So forget all these. I don't want to use any of those. I'm going to use this new one. And the y is going to be replaced with 2x minus 3 down in this equation. So this equation becomes 7x minus 5. And then instead of y, we're going to replace that with 2x minus 3. Yeah, right there, bud. Okay. 7x, uh, oh boy, minus 10x plus 15 equals 21. If I collect my x's together, eesh. and then I subtract 15. These are like my least favorite things to grade because clearly there's a lot of places you can mess up. Usually when I say that, I already messed up. Let's see, 6. So x equals negative 2. And then again, you know, it would be awesome if we're done, but we're not. Because that's only half the solution. I need to go back to this recipe for y and realize if I know that x is negative 2, I could figure out y. 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Uh, negative 7. Whew. What a very unique looking solution very many colors going on there all right so systems by substitution was i mean in my opinion better than graphing i don't know if i had to graph something i could but whatever when you guys learned this next method you were like 
oh, this is the best one. Um, but it's not always the best one because it depends on what your, your problem is set up as. That's the cool thing about these. You could literally solve every single system using every single method and still get the same solution. So your job, is, if, if you're given the choice, is to say, oh, this one is set up really nicely for graphing or substitution or, in these cases, elimination, and then move on from there. It's the good thing about math, and <laughs> we'll learn about this throughout the year, but you know, things that are, that are developed in math and techniques for solving things were only derived because someone in history was like, oh, this is awful solving. Like, what's an easier way to do it? And then they came up with this. So whatever you're currently doing is actually the easier way to do it. So it's just always remember that. <laughs> so let's look at solving a system by elimination. The idea is if I were to add up the system vertically, so I'd add up, I'd line up the X's, Y's, and, and the constants. And if they add up and something cancels out a variable, I've eliminated the variable. So that's like best case solution is that you, you add them and they cancel. So, ooh, look at this. Boom, the X's are just gonna knock out. So they're eliminated, we're good. And then when I add up the Y's, I get two Y's left over. And when I add up the constants, I get negative two. So if I divide by two on both sides, I just found part of my solution as Y being negative one. Make sure that goes in the right part of the ordered pair. And we're not done. <laughs> so this is where you get a little bit of choice. You pick your favorite equation from the original problem. Me personally, I like this top equation. I don't know. Looks like it's got less negatives or something. And we're going to place negative 1 in for the y as we rewrite it. So 9x, that's as it is, plus 5 instead of y, we're going to call that negative 1 equals negative 5. And then we do have to do a little bit of algebra and solve. It is an algebra class, guys. All right, now don't panic. You're going to get zero here. Totally fine. Zero is a number. Because when you divide zero by nine, you still get zero. So kids sometimes freak out when zero show up because they're like, oh, I did something wrong. It's only wrong if you divide by the zero. That's wrong. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next one. Man, fingers crossed that that same beautiful elimination happens magically. Ah, it doesn't. But these x's are very close to eliminating if only this one was negative. So what you can do is you can make him negative by multiplying him by a negative 1. But the trick is if you multiplied the first term in this equation by a negative 1, you would have to multiply every term in that equation by a negative 1. What you are creating is called a linear combination. If I felt like it, I could take any equation on the planet and like multiply it by 120. Because I felt like it, as long as I multiplied every term by it. I haven't changed the value of the equation. The balance is the same, but I'm manipulating it so that a technique that I want to use actually works. Math is kind of, it's kind of awesome like that. So um, let's see what happens now. So this bottom equation becomes something totally different. It becomes negative 10x minus 5y equals negative 15. It looks totally different, but it's actually the exact same equation. So scrap this one, use this one instead, and then look what happens. Boom. Oh, weird. Boom. Ooh, strange. Boom. Okay, so this must be one of those special cases. So you ask yourself, is it no solution or infinitely many solutions? If it's no solution, that's because you're looking at like a really bogus statement. It doesn't make any sense. Does zero equal zero? Yeah. So instead of being no solution, because this does make sense, this is infinitely many solutions. By the way, that is a way we can abbreviate solutions. Because, you know, this is too difficult to write the whole word out. All right, let's look here. Oh, nothing cancels. But I think the Y's would be pretty easy to eliminate. And this is, again, where choice comes in. Your buddy next to you might say, uh-uh, I'm going to eliminate the X's, and I'm going to eliminate the Y's. It doesn't matter because we're both going to get the same answer. The issue is I need these numbers to be additive inverses, so they have to be the same number but opposite signs. So if this Y became a negative 5Y, life would be great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that happen by multiplying him by a negative 5 all the way across, creating a new equation on the bottom that is a linear combination of the original. So the top equation is not changing. The bottom equation becomes positive 35x uh, minus 5y and then equals negative 25. Ooh, whoops. So, boom. Oh, weird. Boom. Mm. Another one of those special cases, but this time, 
we get a bogus statement. Zero does not equal negative four. So in this case, it is no solution. Don't be afraid of these special cases. They're actually easier because they're less work. Okay, number 12. It's the last one on the page, so you know it's going to be a doozy. Uh, these are not going to eliminate, and these are not going to eliminate, and there's no like easy, quick, one one time fix. So what I look for are numbers that are like close to multiples of each other, or if one set of numbers already has opposite signs, like that's cool because you don't have to worry about the negative anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and try to eliminate the x's. So I'm going to look at the negative 7x and the 6x. Um, their first common multiple is 42. So that actually would happen if I just multiply them by each other. Since they already have the right signs, I'm not going to mess with the signs. I'm going to multiply this top equation by 6, this bottom equation by 7, Gonna need a calculator probably, and that's all right. <laughs> so this top equation becomes uh, negative 42x plus 18y. We're not gonna have a special case, so that's a bummer. Equals. Wow, well, I think I know, but I don't want to mess it up. <sighs> no, I didn't get it right, so good thing I checked. 114, and then this bottom equation becomes positive 42. So thumbs up on the canceling. It will happen here plus 35y. Uh, I've learned my lesson here, guys. I'm not going to be multiplying anything in my head today. It's summer. I'm tired. All right. Gone. Yay. Um, maybe I shouldn't be adding either. I don't know. 53y equal. Oh, no. That's not happening. 212. All right, my teacher told me these are all supposed to come out nice. Let's see. Ooh, comes out to four. Nice. All right, so a little bit of bad news, though, guys. We're not done. All I just found was that the Y was four. So that is half my solution. Let's go back to my original problem. Pick a favorite. They're both gross, so I don't know. Bottom equation, maybe. If I plug in Y is four, I get 6X plus, instead of five times Y, it's five times four, so that's a 20. Was 14. Oh, this isn't too bad. Subtracting the 20, you get negative 6. So x equals negative 1. There you go. So nice little refresher of Algebra 1 for you. Um, solving systems of equations, I'm going to ask you specifically to solve them one method when I give them to you on a test. So while you might really enjoy elimination, like maybe I say you have to do substitution on that particular one, there also might be a case where I ask you to justify like which approach you're going to take, which method, and why. So the idea is, what does the original setup look like, and which one's going to give you less work? Um, my reason for not liking graphing is not a good one. <laughs> I just don't like graphing. All right, enjoy. We're gonna the next lesson is going to be a good one. We're going to use real world problems. We're going to set up a system of linear equations um, based on those real world problems. And then we're going to use your favorite method, which is probably elimination, uh, to solve those.